Hi all, let's have a look at the World Chess Championship 2018. Magnus Carlsen playing with the white pieces against Fabiano Caruana. D4 for Magnus. We have Knight F6, Knight F3, D5, C4, E6. So Queen's Gambit declined territory at the moment. Knight C3, Bishop E7. Another popular move in chess-based light book is C6 here. So we see Bishop E7, Bishop F4. Again, the most popular move is Bishop G5 here. And for example, a lot of games have run like this with a fairly balanced position. So this is this would be typical of the Bishop G5 uh, version of events. So this is called basically the Queen's game declined with five Bishop F4 <laughs> instead of Bishop G5. So black castles, E3, C5. And now Magnus takes that pawn. Bishop takes c5. Queen c2. So white is making way to put some pressure on the default. This is very typical to put pressure on that d pawn. We have now, uh, but in fact, there's another move that's often been seen as well. a3, for example, knight c6 and then queen c2. But uh, queen c2 immediately is also very popular. Knight c6. A3. We have Queen A5, and at the moment you might think B4 doesn't that fork here? Just to rule that out. B4. There's Bishop takes B4 because of that pin on the A pawn. So this is not really possible. But you might think after Rook D1, uh, this could be a concern for Black. If uh, instead of rook d1, if bishop e2 was played, then d4 is a little bit scary at first, but it seems this is playable with castling. So, for example, taking b4 now, and this is actually quite nice for white, very, very nice. The queen is trapped here. So, there's some very interesting variations behind the scenes here. Uh, so, in fact, yeah, bishop e2, d4, white just castles. Uh, if e takes d4, this is just an even position. Could end up with an even position. So anyway, in the game, rook d1 was played, which seems to lock down against d4. And maybe black should be concerned about b4. Black actually played rook d8 here. And you might think, well, hang on, isn't b4 now on the cards? Uh, but before we get into that, if d4 here, it does look totally locked down. White just takes and discontinuation, for example, even if there's a fork there, there's b4. And white will end up being material up, resourcefully getting out of that fork with a big advantage. So in the game, yeah, rook d8. And Magnus actually plays bishop e2 here. He's not tempted by trying to fork the queen and bishop with b4 here. This is quite sharp, actually. b4, knight takes is possible. Bishop takes with that nasty pin on c3. And then even more pressure on c3. So this is a, a fascinating uh, variation. If bishop e5, then f6. And black is getting the piece back with interest here. Uh, for example, with bishop d3, then black just gets the piece back with a nice position. And that's a nice advantage for black. And in this line, in fact, uh, if we have a look at it again, instead of bishop d3 here, say white is stubborn bishop d4, then e5, and black is doing really well here. After knight takes f takes, this position with d4 is really dangerous. For example, queen takes, bishop takes c3, the king is exposed, and this is quite crushing after bishop f5. Check, the queen is going to be won, whatever way it's cut here. If king e1, then just queen c1 check, and then d3 check, pushing the king on the f file. So very, very sharp lines, which show that really, bishop e2, yeah, Magnus hasn't missed anything. This isn't, this isn't possible in this position with the king in the center. So knight e4 here, still putting pressure on c3. And white just castles. 
knight takes c3 b takes and you can see the white pawns look pretty damaged but white now carries the potential threat of knight g5 looking at h7 the queen is actually quite useful tactically there on c2 as well as holding c3 black played h6 depriving that use of the g5 square uh, if the materialistic queen takes a3 just to rule it out for you rook a1 and where the where is the queen going it's trapped uh, so bishop takes a3 is just daft going into a self pin <laughs> and uh, for example this yeah white's just got a massive advantage so this is a sensible move ruling out the use of the g5 square uh, just to look if h6 was totally necessary if bishop d7 one of the more sensible alternatives to look at knight g5 what is the impact if black has to play g6 say c takes e takes rook takes d5 this position is not at all nice uh, because white has knight takes e6 yeah it's it's a big advantage for white yeah this is just very very pleasant for white so it seems as though there is a necessity a necessity to rule out knight g5 so h6 we have a4 safeguarding the pawn efficiently knight e7 is played knight e5 so knight e7 took out of the equation uh, the possibilities of you know, the pressure on c6 the knight can sometimes go to f5 here we have bishop d6 just challenging that e5 knight c takes d5 is played here yeah if we look in this position at bishop g3 instead then knight f5 is actually really dangerous trying to undermine the e5 knight tactically for example c takes knight takes and then bishop takes e5 black has a big advantage uh, so anyway this is a very interesting position to analyze in another respect actually as well as c takes d5 there was something else which uh, at the high resolution of the, the live streams uh, it was fun to investigate something which was potentially like like tell like tell -esque, but it doesn't quite work at all in this position well Magnus did play c takes d5 but it's interesting to investigate knight takes f7 I thought this was uh, a bit of naughtiness uh, so with the idea of either queen h7 immediately or or bishop takes and then queen h7 but it just doesn't work there are some dangerous ideas like bishop h5 check uh, but say king takes f7 bishop takes this bishop h5 check and maybe a rook left you might think there's nothing really going on black's best is d4 and just swap the queens off like that it's it's really just an unsound idea but for a moment there it seems quite interesting if queen c7 just to show some of the dangers rook d4 here again black has an adequate defense as long as black is not too greedy well actually black can just take here and, and, and take here in this line uh, if um, knight takes d5 then check here is uh, a potentially dangerous line <laughs> leading to checkmate so it was a bit of fun to analyze knight takes f7 just just to put on the board queen h7 as well let's put that on the board bishop takes f4 seems sufficient and if checking f8 here d takes which hits the bishop yeah there's big problems here if takes rook d1 in this position it turns out bishop d7 is the strongest and kind of refutes uh, this uh, f5 is no longer working here it can just be taken and there's nothing really going on here uh, this is just better for black there's no problem here with this continuation even the king's safe enough so it was an interesting thing just to speculate about from a sort of towel perspective but really quite unsound but funny in a way fun anyway to analyze so anyway c takes d5 magnus keeps it positional knight takes d5 doesn't want to do anything too crazy and just puts more pressure on the black position with bishop f3 which does set a little tactical trap low here it looks as though c3 might be tempting to take in fact Caruana is very focused here on just getting a slightly better pawn structure potentially in the long run he just snaps on f4 if he takes on c3 here then that runs into can you see 
Okay, there's knight c4, full king, the queen and the bishop. That's pretty nasty. Yep, that'll be winning for white. And queen takes c3 is also bad here because of knight takes f7. And look at that nasty pin on the bishop against the rook. This is just all leading to a nice advantage for white, a small advantage there. Anyway, so knight takes f4. This is the most sensible, just simplifying the position with a long-term structural advantage, less pawn islands, basically. But there's a bit of pressure on the b7 pawn, and the c8 bishop looks to be an issue. However, there's two ways of solving it in this position, the c8 bishop and the pressure. Queen c7 was chosen. It seems if Fabiano just wanted to draw, also bishop d7 is very drawish as well. White has too much structural damage here. Yeah, this is just an even position, and there's no problems at all for black. But we see queen c7, which leaves a bit of tension in the position. Uh, we have rook b1, rook b8, queen d3, and sometimes it's useful for queen d6 here if black's not careful. But bishop d7 is played. Uh, here now, a5 is chosen. On queen d6 in this position, then black can actually take and take here. This is okay because there's always king f8 wrapping round the pawn on any c7 on any d7. There's um, king e7, or just taking. In fact, just taking the pawn. It's not, it's not really a problem. But anyway, uh, there's always king e7 if if that is even facilitated. So there's no problem there for black at all. So a5 was chosen to put a bit of pressure on black. Try to. So the queen can't take because of queen takes d7. So bishop c6, now queen d6. But again, this is not really a problem, this continuation. It seems as though white doesn't have too much going on uh, to play this. But it, it just simplifies now after taking. Fabiano shatters the pawn structure and now plays king f8. So if anyone's better, it's going to be black slightly. King's coming round to hit the d6 pawn. A6, B6. At least this dissolves the C pawn with that pin. Now, okay, King D7. C takes, A takes, A7, Rook A8. Takes, takes, <laughs> uh, King G2. But Black now is in a position to technically be a pawn up. But as they say, all Rook and Pawn endings, there's a famous quotation, all Rook and Pawn endings are drawn. So here, uh, white can't get the pawn back in any manner, it seems. You might consider rook g6 as a way of getting the pawn back. For example, like this, check, but alas, there's rook e7. So black technically is a pawn up and remains a pawn up at least, enjoys that for a few moves from a technical perspective. But to actually win this position with black is a very different matter indeed. Uh, this is tried, which dissolves white's pawns as though it leads to something, but really uh, it's solid enough here. In fact, a small <laughs> trap is set. If This would be a really silly move to play in a bullet game, king f3 in this position, because of rook f3 check, actually. <laughs> it's it's actually mating here. The king hasn't got any uh, escape squares, so that would be uh, a blunder to go down in history of world chess championships but no rook g6 rook b4 we have rook g5 uh yeah on king f3 uh it doesn't really matter there's nothing really going on this isn't a good attempt because there was an annoying check and here although this looks scary again now that black's got uh, sorry white's got rook g3 there's no point playing e2 check and if here then rook g2 this this is safe enough for a draw. So there's nothing it seems that's possible to try and win this. Uh, so here actually they agreed a draw. Okay, uh, not the most exciting game ever we've featured on the channel. I hope you enjoyed some of the, the fun variations with Knight takes F7 at least to explore. Uh, just, just for tactical interest. 
so a, a solid positional performance from both players. Some interesting dynamics uh, in the opening around B4 when the White King's in the centre as well. So some some interesting behind the scenes stuff. Uh, Fabiano will be pleased to draw with black here quite comfortably. Very, very solid opening and, and game indeed. Not being tempted uh, to take too much risk. Just go for the long term, slightly better pawn structure. Maybe Meng is slightly disappointed with uh, not getting anything here in this round two game. So two draws now after this game. Everything to play for. If you enjoyed this game analysis, then please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly to become a member at chessworld.net. So you can play against other YouTubers. You can also head for the improved Learn from the Masters menu, YouTube order, and you'll see the analysis of these World Championship games. And they could be updated at any time as well in the future with variations. So you might want to study that uh, along with the videos. Okay, comments, questions, like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. All appreciated. Thanks very much.